Okay, I've made a few videos. So this is, this video, the topic of this video is channel activity. And so in a few videos, I guess I technically I have a, a playlist on my channel for YouTube specific content. So what I mean by that is I have like videos where I talk about how I feel about like likes versus dislikes, location settings for my channel or location setting um, for my channel, channel settings, um, view counts, stuff like my conceptualization of my channel, what metrics I use kind of for gauging externally how I'm doing. So like total number of views per number of, like for all the videos on my channel divided by the number of subscribers on my channel, that's like an external metric because it's what other people are doing to my channel, not what I'm doing to my channel, if that makes sense. Um, so uh, where is this video coming from? It wasn't planned. I was reading, so for my writing, I do a bunch of writing this, these days about aquatics and swimming. And, um, and uh, I was reading a uh, news agency outlet. I don't, different people use different words. I like news outlet is kind of fitting for, uh, it's called Swim Swam and it's multimedia format. So they do videos, podcasts, so video, audio, text. So they publish like both print and online. Um, that kind of thing. So multimedia news outlet. And um, one of the writers, uh, Braden Keith, he wrote a piece today. So it's the 1st of February 2022. And he called on, I was talking, he was talking about Twitter accounts in the swimming community. And he brought up, like, there are people who are active. And then there are people who have, like, the most number of followers, which on so you're talking about Twitter and so on YouTube, the ana analogous situation would be like number of subscribers instead of number of followers. Um, but the um, account activity I thought was interesting. I'm like, channel activity. I've given it some thought. The reason I don't bring it up, like number of videos and stuff like that, uh, is because my content is very variable in nature. So if someone does like has an active life channel, and all they post are active life videos. Maybe that's more relevant, but mine span a bunch of different topics. So that's part of why I don't do it. The other reason is I view this as kind of like uh, internal metrics in I person. So like, this is like internal metrics. Um, for a channel. And we're actually on a poor channel. Um, and why don't I include it? So uh, as a metric to assess like growth and stuff like that, because it's very much dependent on the people whose channel it is. I think um, if I'm guessing correctly, this person, so Braden Keith, um, might have been getting at the, it is possible to quantify channel and account activity, however. So like uh, on Twitter, I, I used to have social media. So I used to have Twitter and Instagram and stuff and I deleted my accounts. Um, on, I'm gonna choose Twitter. On Twitter, from what I can remember, I don't, I haven't used Twitter since I quit having an account. Uh, or no, I deleted the account after I quit using Twitter. There we go. Um, they can track like you, the tweets somebody makes, but they also track the likes, like if you like something or retweet something kind of thing. Um, and a tweet is like a post for those who are unfamiliar with Twitter. I know a lot of people are unfamiliar with Twitter. So it's like um, write a blurb that's really short and then you get to post it and it shows up on like a wall kind of like on Facebook and stuff um and and then you can also so for those for those tweets then other people can come along and comment on them and retweet them so like tweet it on their own page take yours and then put it on theirs and add a comment or not and they can like it and so that's tracked on Twitter and you can go to a person's page and look at what they've liked and what they tweeted and stuff like that um 
And so that's activity, right? If somebody that's somebody pressing something um, or liking something or having someone do it for them, depending on if they do stuff themselves or they have a big team. I'm a one person team, 10 solo um, for my stuff online, at least at this point in time and all the way up to this point in time and continuing for the foreseeable future um, that way. Uh, so I, this so it is on YouTube, I'm okay, this is a very long-winded way of, that would be like number of videos. There's community posts. So I do not have it enabled on my channel. Some channels do. Uh, it's a community tab on a YouTube channel and people, so the person whose channel it is can post on there and other people can reply and stuff. Um, so those are actually two forms of activity. I think I don't, why don't I, so I should say for me, it's, it's not so much a quantitative measure as a qualitative measure about a channel. I, so I'd say in that sense, it might be more, I don't, it's getting a feel for the person. So it's more, in, it's a more individual thing. Um, if one is viewing as an individual. So I'd say it's a um, individual, individuating, 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 uh, differentiating metric, if we want to call it, um, for initiating. Oh. I spelled these right? I don't even know if that's a word. Uh, Point being, uh, it's very dependent on the person and how they set their channel up. I would say there's people who post a bunch of videos or post some videos and then don't post for like, you know, a decade and they come back to the channel because life just brings them back around. Um, or people set the, unless I want to achieve something before I get back to posting videos. So like YouTube, I would say is actually kind of unique in that sense where long breaks in activity don't hurt a channel and can actually help a channel. Um, I, for myself, so I took a break when I was running into some uploading problems with YouTube. I still have uploading problems with YouTube, but it was, it got so frustrating that I was like, I posted a video being like, I don't know if I'm, it was a goodbye to YouTube. I think it's the name of the video. And just, I, so I took a few months off and, um, I got a whole bunch of subscribers. And views and stuff so like it can actually be good for a channel to take a break in posting i i've noticed for my channel that if i stop posting i actually tend to get like there tends to be kind of a filling in people come and watch my it's like i'm not saying like people don't watch my content because i'm here but there, there's kind of like that correlation where if i'm not actively posting i kind of get more views um <laughs> across the board so, in by actively posting, I mean posting, like, on average, one video a day. Um, I know a lot of channels don't do that, but there are a lot of channels that do do that. Because so, some people view it as, well, I don't know if I would call this a career, but, like, I'm sharing my career in, I don't know. So, it's, a, it's like, a, like a lifestyle thing um, versus, I guess... Some people who view it as a career in each video as a production might put out a video like ev on average once a week or once a month or they do a handful of very career or job related videos. Um, I don't do that. I'm, I'm more of a, I guess, a lifestyle channel is something that's consistent, like consistently posting might be. So I guess this gets back to the channel activity. Um, if somebody's posting, I'd say in my experience and the people I've known, YouTube channels that post consistently in a variety of topics tend to be kind of socially dubbed lifestyle channels, um, which can be hard to take off. People purposely focus on niches to get views and to get subscribers. They'll focus on one thing. So if they're an athlete, they'll focus on their career <laughs> um <laughs> or their training or you know, everything around the world of their career 
or people who are like the through hiking community focuses on through hiking, food, active life. Like, so they're very niche as opposed to very broad um, kind of channels. And mine's a broad channel and uh, yeah, <laughs> it's, uh, um, I would say, where has, can this go wrong? I'm saying that it's, it, it's, I guess it's a kind of a good thing. It's more of an internal metric than something else. And it's more of like a, I'll subscribe to channels that purposefully put out, if I'm like on YouTube a lot, like I am these days, I'll subscribe to stuff like Swim Swam or Fina or like, cause I'm writing about swimming and they put out a bunch of content um, kind of thing. And like, I can watch water polo, like world, like water polo matches and like kind of like championships, but like tournaments. Um, I can watch that live and stuff like that or go back and watch it. And like, I'll comment in the live sometimes, not all the time. Um, but I did that for like Olympics trials boxing qualifier too. Um, Gamira Conan, <laughs> but she didn't make it to the Olympic games. Um, 2020 Summer Olympic Games. Uh, point being, <clears throat> activity can look different. I guess it's more of being cognizant. This is a, this is, I, um, being cognizant of people will assess a channel on how many vo videos are posted, but also the timing. Timing and spacing, <laughs> which I might actually call pacing of video posts. And I am going to be a stickler here and emphasize, so all of the videos on my channel are public. That is not true for a lot of like business channels. Um, like people who do consulting work will upload videos and keep them private and then share the link with their clients. Um, or so I've heard. And so there are some channels where like what I'm saying doesn't really matter at all because they post a bunch of private videos as opposed to public videos. So I'm doing public videos available to everybody. Um, that, so there's a whole world of YouTube I don't know because I don't do that, the private stuff. When I started out, I had I experimented with videos when they were private and I would delete stuff and stuff like that just to see what happens. <laughs> um, experimentation is healthy. Um, as long as one doesn't go overboard, has some sort of idea in mind. It doesn't get lost in it. Um, but pacing of video posts, because uh, it can, I would say it doesn't hurt a channel. Like there are channels that will take breaks on a, they'll say they're going to post something every week and then they take multi-month breaks and they come back and they like I still watch the content um I might engage with it I have found that channels like that I tend not to engage with so much I will watch but that doesn't mean I like or dislike a video or comment on the video um and I would say it becomes more about the content than it does about the person whose channel it is um or organization or whatever because they put forward something and then don't do it, but they don't like, they provide an activity, channel activity metric to evaluate them on and they fail miserably. I'm gonna post every week on Wednesday. I don't do that, but somebody says that about their channel and then they don't do anything for like five months. So if we're, that's like 20 times, they have not done what they said they would do. Um, So in that sense, it becomes a little bit more like, okay, so this person doesn't always, follow through, like, um, which I think it sometimes can be called a lack, like they don't have integrity, right? They don't follow through with what they say they're going to do. Um, so it's more of, I would say it's not, if one's just looking at number of likes or number of views and stuff, eh, inconsistent channel activity isn't necessarily a bad thing. It might hurt the reputation of the person or organization whose channel it is. That's, um, uh, very consistent with feedback I've gotten about the inconsistent kind of channels.